Uh, this is a 3D printer, right? Yes, they are. Cool. How does it uh, How does it work? Uh, in its simplest form, it's like a robotic hot glue gun. So this end down here heats up to about 200 degrees Celsius. This one right now is at 210 degrees Celsius, and the bed is at 60 degrees Celsius. Um, this helps it stick out a little bit. Okay. And we use something called CNC G code to actually control the motion of the. Um, of the extruder, which is what I spiked the hot glue on before. Okay. So this piece down here slowly lays down plastic. It's got a nozzle that's about 0.4 millimeters wide. And we take the model and we slice it into layers. Right now this one's set up with layers 0.2 millimeters thick. So it creates a 2D profile of 0.2 each layer. millimeters. 0.2 millimeters, 200 microns. We can go anywhere between 50 microns, which is 0.05 millimeters, and 300 microns, which is 0.2 millimeters on this machine. Uh, the clean model over here, this printing is actually printing at 500 microns right now, or 0.3. I'm not sure if it's a little weird right now. You really get a lot of detail that way. Yeah, well this one looks like it's starting to freak out actually right now. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on, but I'll fix that in a minute. But yeah, so you This one's coming out real good. What, yeah. what is this one making? This one I think is making a, a gear. A gear? A gear that they're going to snap into a uh, gear housing. Wow. Yeah, this thing is going to have to off the plate. Sorry guys. I'm not sure what that's it. But it would all be one color, of course. Unless you have two nozzles. You can't have two nozzles, no? I'm just telling you no. I hear so much about it when we've actually seen one before. So yeah, this is actually it. I'm trying to calibrate play right now. Oh, yeah. No, it did. It should, yeah, wait. Yeah, wait. Yeah, wait. Yeah. If I can both go I've had a printer, the first few layers were going fine. I walked away for a few hours, and when I come back, there's just a big ball of the wrapped around the nozzle. My students are like this. <laughs> so hydroponics. All right. So it's without. It's growing without soil. So usually when you have a hydroponic setup, you have to put a little nutrients in because what usually the plants get it from the soil and you're not having soil. So you put a little stuff like some artificial miracle grow, and that gives the plants the nitrates that they need. That's like the main thing that they need. In this setup, however. This is called aquaponics, which is a combination of hydroponics and aquaculture. I've never heard of that. Aquaponics. This, yes. Is that new? How? how? Relatively. Yeah, no? it's been around for a while. Yeah, but yeah. like it's getting more popular. It's, it was it was a combination. It was a combination of hydroponic when hydroponic started to get a lot of attention. Uh, guys that grow, grew fish were seeing that they would waste all that water. They would throw away all that water in aquaculture. So they combined together and created aquaponics. Cool. All right. So in this case, the fit there's a fish down here, and oh, there with, is. yeah, there's a fish. Uh, where is he? He likes to hide in the back. Yeah, there he is. Um, Hello. So the fish <laughs> will produce ammonium, and then the ammonium will start cycling through the system and turn into nitrites, and the nitrites will then turn into nitrates, and that's like what I said is what the plants very desperately need. So once the nitrates are in the system, then it becomes a self-sustaining system where you feed the fish, the fish lives, and then the fish produces those nitrates that the, well, through that whole process I just explained. Produces and the what nitrates. does the fish get from the plants? Clean water. Though the it filtrates the water. The nitrates, it'll filter out the nitrates, and then it gets the clean water. Wow. And so we, in this system, we put a little compost in the plants you don't okay. necessarily need it but what Jafet was concerned with is often aquaponic systems become a little bit nutrient deficient okay it's like us we sometimes need to take vitamins to supplement so putting some compost in will supplement and give those uh those nutrients that aren't just what the fish provide so it's a little bit extra and then we don't have here but, but you don't need it you don't necessarily but it's but it's healthy for the plants yeah, but it helps the plants 
like continue to thrive. Right. Um, okay. And then what Jafet also has at home we don't have here is he puts worms in the gravel, and so that their waste produces more stuff that the um, that the plants need, right? Yeah. It's high in nitrogen. Yes. So that's very high in nitrogen, and then the fish eat some of the stuff that falls off the plants, and then we have a whole other aspect of the ecosystem. In this. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that explanation. Have a nice day. You too. Bye bye. You're a teacher. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe. <laughs> So, Five minutes on yeah. Friday, okay. Good? <laughs> okay, right. here we go. So um, graphing, graphing the pH level yeah, of the system. Yeah, so because when the system is first set up, the levels are very high. What should the pH level of the water be? Around seven, right? Yeah, around seven. Okay. Just to check in with this. These are especially for fish, so it tells you what the safe levels are for the different um, nutrients. So what's these, the, what's, what is the highest it can go for the fish, where, it, where it's okay the for the pH? Not once too high or too hitting eight and nine, you're yeah. really even an eight. It's yeah. too it. Because for um, basic person, that's, that's too basic. Neutral. They prefer, they prefer neutral. neutral. Yeah. Okay, wow. So um, this these test strips test the nitrates, the nitrites, the hardness, and then alkalinity and pH. And so um, this does all that. So you can get multiple levels from these strips. Okay. And then. If you are keeping track of them over time, you can make sure your system is working well. Before uh, you add plants to the system, okay. the ammonia levels are very high before the whole system will start to work. So what you're supposed to do is when you have the fish, before you add plants, you're supposed to replace the water every once in a while, check to make sure the ammonia isn't getting too high for the fish before the cycle can before the cycle starts working. So that's kind of the thing. Okay. The kids can test the water, check it out, and then keep track. Like. We're replacing the water, but still getting high. Maybe we should be replacing more water. Or like this is a good, safe level for the fish, and you can test all those things. Wow, awesome! You'd have to get separate. These don't do ammonia, but they sell um, ammonia test strips too. Awesome. Also, a quick note about pH. Uh, the reason why it really makes a huge difference once you go from you know seven to eight to nine is it's called a logarithmic scale. And what that means is that every time you go on a local, the a logarithmic log scale. Oh, lot, logarithms, 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 logarithms. Everybody has to okay. pronounce it. But All the right. reason why is that um, there's actually an ion that we're tracing, an OH minus ion, and the concentration really varies wildly. Uh, it's kind of the same way that we measure sound pressure. The way we feel sound pressure isn't necessarily the same as the way that sound pressure is represented in physics. So what we do to kind of make it seem more linear to us is we put it in a lower rhythmic scale. What that means is when you have, let's say, a pH of 7, let's say I have one bad ion, then I go up to a pH of 10, I'll have, uh, sorry, a pH, a, pH of, um, a pH of 8, I'll have 10 times as many, so I'll have 10 bad ions. Then I go up to a pH of 9, 10 times as many, and I have 100. Now it's going to exponentially worse each time. Exact, it's a logarithmic scale, which is the opposite of an exponential. Wow. It takes an exponential curve, but it makes it linear. Awesome. Very interesting. All right, thanks, everybody. No Thank problem. you. Bye-bye. <laughs>